You might have heard that Frost Stone gear is extremely good and extremely overpowered. Here's how much it costs per Frost Stone ore, over a thousand gold, and you can only get this after killing the Frost Wyvern and then mining it in the treasure room. So that's got to be a good money maker now. But let me just show you guys an example of just how good this gear is. So I put together an example set here, and I am going to use this set later with my buddies. So what I've got on is a artifact weapon, Echo Screams, that's a battle axe. And then everything here looks fairly normal for like an artifact set, right? I mean, it's all super expensive. It's all pretty much what you go with. But you can see these Frostlight items don't have anything that are like crazy rolls or anything like that. Let's go ahead and go over to my details. Here's what's crazy. My move speed is 330. This set looks pretty unassuming when you first look at it, but yeah, I am at absolute max move speed. And here's the thing with that. I can pull out my Echo of Screams, and if my bard buddy buffs me up with a couple of move speed songs, and I hit my rage button here, I will move at maximum move speed with my weapon out. And once again, this is an artifact weapon, super expensive setup. So I could probably one shot people if I bonk them in the head with this, right? And they just have no chance to actually get away from me. And that's what is OP about these. Each one of these items is akin to a legendary, but add a move speed to it. For instance, these gloves actually give me move speed. These Trousers only have minus one move speed and six agility, so I gain a lot of move speed from them. Normally, they are minus two. Or how about this warden outfit? I don't even know if warden outfits can normally be worn by barbarians, but this is minus five speed and six agility. So I'm almost gaining move speed from this guy as well. And then I also get 60 armor rating from it and five rolls. And then you can mix this with things like, say, a copper light straw hat that has a move speed bonus or anything like that. And then you end up with a crazy good kit. So let's talk about this and its far reaching implications. So you might know about gold gear and how strong that is. Now, gold gear is more so, so that you have more health and it'll make you a little tankier. This is different, though. This gives you more move speed. So you can both be a little bit tankier and have a little bit higher move speed. And I understand that you guys might think, ah, one move speed per gear item doesn't make all that much of a difference. But it really does, especially if you're able to force roll legendaries with that one move speed. That makes a huge difference because most items cannot have a move speed roll on them. So even just a couple of extra move speed can completely break the game. Now, that said, the developers did this on purpose. They, of course, wanted this to be extremely strong because you only get this ore after killing the Frost Wyvern. Now, let's talk about that. So, that means there's a new best moneymaker, which is now killing the Frost Wyvern. I'm not certain what the exact best way is with killing the Frost Wyvern to farm the absolute most of this and earn the most gold. Uh, I lean towards it being duos, high roller so that way you get more ore and then you should get as much ore each even if you're splitting it between your team and you have a chance at getting an artifact weapon as well then and so i think that's probably the best way to make the most gold some people might say ah you could solo it still as warlock which you can but the problem is there's not any possible way as far as i can tell to kill it fast enough and get every single smidgen of ore that's down there. I think you get like 15 or 20 ore out of it after you kill the boss. And there's just no way for you to mine that fast enough after killing the boss. And you have to kit up so much in order to kill the boss that it just, it doesn't make too much sense to be doing it as solo high roller unless you're going for artifacts specifically. If you're going for the ore, it just doesn't make too much sense. Another viable method might be just running under 25 gear score lobbies as Warlock and soloing the Frost Wyvern just in normals. So that will also give you some Frost Stone ore. You don't have any chance at getting an artifact or anything like that, but then you're solo, don't have to split it with anybody, and it makes it a lot easier to do it because 
as you guys might know, it's kind of hard to find a teammate who actually knows how to do the boss, especially if you're trying to do like a challenge method, like soloing it or duoing it or anything like that. It takes a ton of practice and finding someone else who is as good as you if you practice the boss a whole ton like that is pretty difficult generally. So that might be another method that's really fast for making gold here. Also, this isn't just good on your lighter classes. This is also good on your heavier classes because it also has plate gear that once again has the plus one move speed. Although I do think that the majority of the frost stone ore is going to get used on making these more leather items because the move speed impacts more as you get towards the higher end of it. It's, it's kind of the same as how it works for PDR and how it works for movement. It's not like you actually get that much more move speed, but it allows you to do more things. If you are fast enough that you're like a rogue and you can just duck around people's attacks that are slower attacks and things like that and just come in and poke them, yeah, that's really, really strong. And you could do that as classes that are not rogue now and they have a little bit more pack behind their punch. Also, I love this clip right here. I just sent that guy into the void. Oh my gosh, I love that clip. So yeah, what you could do is, yeah, you can kit up even as a heavier class and be very fast. And that's what I was showing you guys in the beginning with that barbarian kit, which I will end up using. You guys might end up seeing a video from it, might not, depending on how quickly I die with it. Um, but yeah, that kit is incredibly good. And that is very different from anything we've seen in the game before. Barbarian being able to move at max move speed with weapon out, and that weapon would, frankly, one-shot pretty much anybody. Maybe if you're like a PDR cleric or PDR fighter, it wouldn't. But otherwise, you are going to go down in a single shot with that setup I have on there if I hit you in the head. Which, that's pretty scary because you cannot run away from that. You, they would have to hit me with, like, say, a slow spell or something along those lines to actually be able to get away from me. Also, there are new frost stone weapons I've seen. It seems like they have true physical damage on them. And then it seems to vary a little bit between them. Like, some of them have armor pen from what I've seen. Um, although I will say they're not really being sold much on the market. So maybe they're not as worthwhile to craft as some of the other weapons are. And that would just be because for the armor items, those are best in slot items, those frost stone items. Whereas for the weapons, there's usually an artifact weapon you can use and go in that direction. Also, I real quick wanted to talk about the cost of these items. If you want one with even like semi good rolls, it is so, so expensive. Uh, the gear I have on on that Barbarian, the actual like armor items and all of that, I spent as much on the armor items as I spent on the artifact weapon itself, which I spent about 40k on the artifact weapon, which was a pretty good snipe of a deal. Um, but yeah, the gear costs about as much as that as well. I had to liquidate a skull key as part of that, and I had a whole bunch of gold left. I've still got a bunch of gold keys left and such, but... It was very, very expensive. And we're jumping into the abyss. And we're cutting ahead here. And you guys are going to get to see me do my first Frost Wyvern solo attempt here in this clip. Um, now, what I would recommend you guys do if you're trying to solo the Frost Wyvern is do not fight the mobs. Literally just run straight past and go as quickly towards the boss platform. Hellfire down the doors. And then what you can do is just keep running. And when you get to the harpies where you got to do the uh, parkour, just go ahead and hit phantomize and jump up as the harpies are attacking at you while you're in phantomize. Get all the way up. And then when you're on the boss platform, that is a good fighting area for the harpies because you kind of need some space for the harpies to fight them. I was thinking, hey, you probably got to clear out the area beforehand because otherwise you can't kite the harpies. But no, you just get up on top of the platform. That's the fastest way to do it. And speed is important here if you want to mine all the ore afterwards. So I would highly recommend you guys do that. And yeah, this should be probably the new fastest moneymaker. It would be at least 10,000 gold per hour, just the method where you're farming it in normals. I think high roller is probably a bit better money per hour with a duo. Um, I don't think in solo it would actually beat the normals, even with the artifact chance. Those artifacts are very expensive from Frost Wyvern, but I still don't think it would actually beat just mining the ore, because the ore is so expensive. 
Also, um, if you guys actually have the levels to craft this gear, let me know if you're making profit on crafting this stuff. I would think the Froststone Lightfoot boots would probably be the best thing in terms of making gold from crafting. Although, I don't know if that's true. It should generally make a profit from what I was seeing, though. And if you get move speed plus uh, additional move speed and move speed bonus, then you are going to be making so much money. I tried to buy some of those for that setup because it would have made me able to do a lot of things like PDR and other things. I could have gotten probably an extra seven move speed with that. Um, but trying to buy additional move speed and move speed bonus on Froststone Lightfoot boots, they literally don't exist on the market, which means they are valued at over a skull key, which is 50K. And from what I understand, you can't even list an item on the market for over 50K which pushes people towards the trade chat if you guys have not been in the trade chat that's why everything in there is so expensive it's because it literally can't be traded outside of that it can't be put on the market for its appropriate value it can be put up for 50k but say it's worth 400k like it's a viola or something right then it doesn't end up going on the market it doesn't do that because no one's going to sell that for 50k uh, and this, that really makes me uh, think of RuneScape back in the day with buying party hats too. Because the maximum in that game that you could pay for an item was 2 billion gold. But uh, the party hats ended up being worth way more than 2 billion gold actually pretty early on. So people would go to third party markets and they'd just trade each other one to one. And they'd give each other item trades or something like that that would come out to the equivalent value. Uh, very nostalgic for that. Although I will say I love the market and the market has been such a great addition for the game. I really hope they add like an item lookup or something along those lines like how Tarkov has because that would make it even easier to use, even quicker to use, and I'd love it even more then. But it's such a good addition. When we had to use just the trade channel before, that was horrible. That was just absolutely awful. And you guys can see here, I could have just hellfired down that door and then I could have ran over here immediately and phantomized the moment this harpy got up to me and I would have been fine to just run all the way up to the top. Uh, do be careful of these guys, though, because if they hit you as you're going up, they will actually hit you for quite a distance. They'll push you very far, and that is a really easy way to die. And I say that from experience because my run before this, I actually died to the harpy pushing me over the ledge, um, and that was kind of sad. But now that I know the method and I'm going to train this some more, I'm certain I'll get good at it. And I went too far back there. You kind of got to be closer if you want to do that. And how you kite them is go to the right or left side just real close to them and hug them. And then if they do their little like wing slash thing, you go ahead and just run up forward in middle and you can just hit them, honestly. All right, now we're going to jump up the platform here. Now, you guys might not have known as well that they changed the Frost Wyvern just a little bit ago that you do not need four people anymore. I forgot to talk about this earlier. Yeah, you just deactivate the statues now. Now, it would still be desirable to have way more people because it has so much health and it has very high damage resistance to magic and projectiles that it just takes a really long time to kill without multiple people. Like, the boss fight will take you a good seven ish minutes even in normals with base kit now of course you can do it faster than that but that's what i've seen as kind of like the average if you use flame walker and hellfire repeatedly you will kill stuff faster make certain by the way if you're fighting this boss to always kill this harpy as well first you want to kill both harpies this is a nightmare one so i'm kind of playing it safe and you can see just how quickly it gets up on me there when you're casting the spells make certain you jump as you're casting them because that keeps you with a lot more move speed uh, and that can help you to get hit less and you can actually double jump with it and retain more move speed but triple jump afterwards does not do anything for you it's quite literally b hopping like in csgo uh, and i'm surprised honestly that the devs haven't done anything about it it is kind of a cool tech but um, it's counterintuitive to say the least like you wouldn't normally think that jumping would end up speeding you up because your legs are on the ground for less time so they're getting less traction less momentum pushing you forward all right and so i'm gonna go deactivate the last statue here and always cast your hellfire at the boss beforehand when you're doing this that way it'll just get up and immediately get hit 
Now, you just want to spam him with Hellfire pretty much as he dodges at you, as he dives at you, I should say, and just hit him with plenty of Hellfire. Now, what I'm doing wrong here, by the way, as you guys are watching this, I got to make certain that I am actually jumping as I use my Hellfire there, because otherwise I lose too much move speed. You can absolutely hit him with that every single time he does a dive, but you have to do the jump or else you will get hit and it will be bad for you. And right there, I should have been casting Hellfire as I was doing that jump because I wouldn't lose any momentum from it. And I should have been jumping as I used that Curse of Pain there, and I should have been casting it at a better time as well. That was a little bit better. That's more like what I want to do. And do keep some distance from him, but not too much distance. That way you don't get hit by that stomp attack. But that way he still does melee attacks and doesn't just dive at you and magic missile you repeatedly. At least that's what I want to call it, but that's him spamming his little, like, ice breath attack. And I'm losing a lot of health here, and it's just a bad situation. Also, they nerfed Warlock the other day, so this is a little bit harder of a method now because the magical healing items don't do as much for you. I'd also recommend swapping Mystic Gloves for Rawhide Gloves. That way you have faster cast speed. And right there, I should have been jumping as I used the Hellfire as well. And you kind of got to time it properly. Also, I've been seeing a lot of people doing this online where they're just, they're soloing the Frost Wyvern, right? And as they should be, because it's an extremely good moneymaker. But I will tell you guys, it is harder than it looks. Harder than they make it look. Because a lot of those people have tried fighting the boss like 50 times, and now they're really good at it. He's definitely harder than the Crypt's bosses are. And that was my first attempt, and I died right there. All right, anyways, if you guys liked this video, go ahead and leave a comment below and leave a like and subscribe. I really appreciate it, guys. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye.